in the farthest reaches of the southern hemisphere, beyond the shipping lanes, beyond the storm belts, there's a glacier the size of Florida. It sits in the West Antarctic ice sheet flowing into the Amundsen Sea. From above, it looks still, monolithic, eternal. But deep beneath its frozen surface, there's a hum of activity. This glacier is moving, cracking, thinning, melting. And scientists are worried because this glacier, called Thwaites, holds back enough ice to raise global sea levels by over 10 feet. If it collapses, it won't just reshape coastlines, it could reshape the world. So what is the Doomsday Glacier? Thwaites Glacier is one of the widest on Earth. It spans 80 miles across, and in some places, it is over 3,000 feet thick. Together with the surrounding ice in the West Antarctic Ice Sheet, it helps stabilize the region's entire glacial system, much like a keystone in an arch. But over the past few decades, Thwaites has been changing. Radar data, satellite images, and underwater surveys have revealed alarming signs. It's retreating rapidly, it's losing over 50 billion tons of ice every year, and crucially, it's being melted not just from the top, but from below. What's driving this? Warm ocean water. Unlike Greenland, where atmospheric warming dominates, Antarctica's biggest threat comes from below, as relatively warm, salty seawater flows beneath the ice shelf and erodes it from the inside out. Here's where things get technical and dangerous. The part of Thwaites that we're most concerned about isn't the land-based ice sheet, it's the floating ice shelf at its front edge. This shelf acts like a buttress. It holds back the glacier behind it, slowing its slide into the ocean. Unfortunately, satellite data and submarine robots have revealed that this ice shelf is fracturing and fast. In some places, warm water has carved out deep channels underneath it. In others, the ice is barely hanging on, attached to underwater mountains and ridges that provide the last points of resistance. If the shelf breaks apart, and it very well might in the next few years, the glacier behind it could accelerate dramatically, sending ice into the sea much faster than the current models expect. And once that happens, there's no easy way to stop it. Glaciers don't melt like ice cubes. They don't disappear steadily or predictably. They collapse in thresholds. And the problem with Thwaites is that we may already be approaching one. Scientists call this a marine ice sheet instability. It's a feedback loop. The glacier retreats, that exposes deeper ice, deeper ice flows faster, and faster flow means more retreat. Once this cycle starts, past a certain point, it becomes irreversible, even if the world stopped warming tomorrow. The scary part? We don't know if Thwaites has already crossed that threshold. And even if it hasn't, we don't know how much time we have left. So, what happens if it collapses? If Thwaites fully collapses, global sea levels would rise by around two feet. But that's not the whole story. Thwaites is also holding back the rest of the West Antarctic ice sheet, a much larger mass of ice. If destabilized, that could raise levels by 10 feet or more. That would be catastrophic. Cities like New York, Miami, Mumbai, and Shanghai could face permanent flooding. Entire low-lying nations from the Maldives to Kiribati could disappear. And coastal infrastructure like ports, power plants, and sewage systems, that would all be under threat. And remember, sea level rise doesn't happen evenly. Some places would face far greater local impacts due to gravitational and ocean circulation changes. This isn't a century from now problem. Sea levels are already rising. And Thwaites may be one of the biggest wild cards in how quickly and how badly that gets worse. So it becomes a scientific race. In 2020, a multinational effort launched the International Thwaites Glacier Collaboration, a joint research mission between the US and the UK involving dozens of scientists, ice cores, drones, satellites, and even robotic submarines. They've drilled through the ice, mapped the seafloor, and sent instruments beneath the shelf. And they're trying to answer one central question. How fast could this glacier collapse? The answer isn't clear. Some models suggest it could take centuries. Others, if the shelf breaks soon, say it could be decades. But every year of data sharpens the picture, and every new finding points to the same general conclusion. Thwaites is in trouble, and we still don't fully understand what's happening underneath. This isn't just a story about a glacier. It's a story about systems and limits. Thwaites is 10,000 miles from most people's lives, but its fate is tied to ours. It reveals just how interconnected the planet really is, how warming oceans can undermine ice sheets, which reshape coastlines, which displace people, which spark economic shocks and political crises. It also reminds us that the most dangerous feedback loops don't always start with explosions. Sometimes they start in silence, with a trickle of meltwater under a glacier few people have heard of. So what can we do? We can't stop Thwaites from melting, but we can slow it down. 
Every ton of carbon avoided buys us time. Time to adapt, to invest in coastal defenses, to manage relocation, to build smarter systems. And time to avoid triggering other tipping points in Greenland, in the Amazon, in the permafrost. Because the longer we delay, the less control we'll have. Climate change isn't a single crisis, it's a cascade. And Thwaites is one domino we cannot afford to ignore. The Thwaites Glacier may not collapse tomorrow, but it is melting. And as it melts, it's quietly rewriting the map of the world. We won't stop that by looking away. We stop it or slow it by paying attention. At Forever Green, we believe in telling the stories that matter, even the ones buried under a mile of ice. Subscribe for more in-depth explorations of the systems that shape our planet. And join our exclusive YouTube community to support original science content, access early videos, and join a conversation that goes deeper than the surface. Because this is the century we decide what kind of future we want. And the glaciers are listening.